Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hashem Ali Khan. This is the last video on allowances. Last three videos I have completed 12 problems on allowances like uh, entertainment allowance, house rent allowance. Now apart from that other allowances are there like travel allowance, conveyance allowance, education, children education allowance, children hostel allowance. So these are the problems I am going to do in this last and final video on allowances. So if you have not watched the earlier videos, I suggest you go to the playlist of my channel, select the subject income tax for the assessment year 20 to 23. Watch all the videos regarding allowances. Be perfect. So before starting the 13th problem, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. Take the screenshot of the points written on the board, then I will explain every point in detail. Now, 13th problem. Sri S. N. Sh L. N. Sharma, sorry. Sri S. Uh, L. N. Sharma is working in a limited company in Guntur. His salary particulars per month are basic 12,000, DA 3,000, CCA 2,000, transport allowance 1,800. Calculate the taxable amount of transport allowance. Only one allowance it is asking you how much is the taxable portion of traveling uh, transport allowance 1800 for transport allowance provision is uh, provisions are given under the income tax act regarding uh, normal person and handicapped person for normal person transport allowance is fully taxable so in our problem it is not given that he is a handicapped person he is a normal person so when the SSC is a normal person, transport allowance is fully taxable. So how much he is getting per month? 1800 he is getting per month. So 1800 into 12. So when I give the lecture, always keep a notebook, calculator, pen beside you and note it down immediately the provisions. Then only you can be able to remember because so many provisions are there. Simply if you listen, if you watch the video, you cannot be able to remember. That's why always maintain the notes. Now, the SSC is a normal person, so actual allowance received is fully taxable. The taxable transport allowances 1800 per month into 12, 21600. That's all. Now, next 14th problem calculate the taxable portion of Mr. Kannappa transport allowance in the following two situations. Again, we are given the problem on transport allowance. Two cases are given. First case SSC is a physically handicapped person. Income Tax Act has given the rule regarding handicapped person. If transport allowance is given to a person who is physically challenged, physically handicapped or a blind person, then allowance is exempted up to 3200 per month. So actual allowance received or 3200 per month, whichever is lower, that will be exempted. Remaining is taxable for physically handicapped. So in our problem, Mr. Kanappa transport SSC is a physically handicapped person. The actual amount spent is not to be considered. One point, it is given. Uh, basic pay 7,500 per month, bonus 5,000 per annum, transport allowance 3,000 per month, actual amount spent 1,000. Don't consider the actual amount. Simply take the transport allowance received. Now, the exemption is leased to the following two amounts. Actual amount received. He got 3000 per month, so 36,000. And the fixed amount, ceiling given by Income Tax Act is 3200 per month. 3200 into 12, 3800. Whichever is leased is exempted. Here the least is 36,000. So 36,000 is exempted. The actual allowance received 36,000 and exempted allowance is also 36,000. So taxable transport allowance will be nil. The taxable transport allowance will be nil. That's it. This is for A case where the SSC is a physically handicapped. Now B case, it is normal. Uh, where SSC is a normal person. When SSC is a normal person, actual allowance received is fully taxable. So how much actual allowance received? 3,000 per month. So 3,000 per month into 12, 36,000 is fully taxable. 
if the person is a normal person that's all this is the end of 14th problem now i'm coming to the 15th one sri venkateshwar rao is working as a lecturer in lucknow his salary particulars are as under basic pay 30000 per month da 14000 per month conveyance allowance 4200 actual amount spent 3200 now new point previous two problems we have seen transport allowance now we are seeing conveyance allowance regarding conveyance allowance income tax act says unspent amount is taxable the so actually amount received is 4200 and amount spent is 3200 So 4,200 minus 3,200, 1,000 rupees is taxable. This is the new point. Children education allowance 2,000 per annum per child for three children. The employee is having three children. For three children, he is getting the allowance 2,000 per annum per child. Means totally 2,000 into three, 6,000 children education allowance he got. But income tax act says there is a ceiling. That is hundred rupees per month or twelve hundred rupees per annum per child for a maximum of two children. So income tax exemption will be given only for two children. How many? We we are not concerned about how many children education allowance is given, but exemption will be given only for two children. Calculate the exemption to be allowed for allowances and compute the gross income from salary. So here we have to find out Sri Venkateshwar Rao computation of gross income from salary. First of all, basic. How much is the basic salary? Thirty thousand per month. So thirty thousand into twelve, three lakh sixty thousand basic. Allowances DA. DA is fully taxable. Fourteen thousand per month into twelve, one lakh sixty eight thousand. Regarding conveyance allowance, unspent amount is taxable. So in working note. Conveyance allowance, unspent amount is taxable. Actual allowance received four thousand two hundred. Amount spent three thousand two hundred. So one thousand is the taxable conveyance allowance. Now children education allowance. Again in working note, exemption is given only for two children by Income Tax Act. Whatever with the number of children the allowance is given, irrespective of the number of children allowance is given, Income Tax Act says exemption will be given only for two children. Actual allowance received. The SSC got two thousand rupees per annum per child for three children. So two thousand into three six thousand is the actual allowance received. Exemption will be given hundred rupees per month or twelve hundred rupees per annum per child for a maximum of two children. So twelve hundred into two two thousand four hundred. Whichever is least is exempted. So two thousand four hundred is least. That is exempted. So actual allowance received is six thousand minus exempted allowance two thousand four hundred. So taxable allowance three thousand six hundred. Six thousand minus two thousand four hundred three thousand six hundred. This is the taxable children education allowance three thousand six hundred. Take the total of these four amounts five lakh thirty two six hundred. This is the gross income from salary. That's all. This is the end of problem number. 15 now 16th problem <clears throat> sri rajesh agarwal is working in a limited company in surat his salary particulars are as follows basic pay 15000 per month da 2700 per month fully taxable children education allowance to his daughter that means only for one child the employer is giving children education allowance only for one daughter 1500 per month So fifteen hundred per month into twelve, eighteen thousand rupees he got in one year. But exemption will be given only for twelve hundred for one child. Maximum for two children it is allowed. But he is getting the children education allowance only for one child. So exemption will also be given for one child. So twelve hundred rupees is exempted, right? And hostel allowance to his son five thousand rupees per month. Actual amount spent two thousand per month. Actual allowance should be ignored for calculating hostel allowance. Hostel allowance again exemption will be given maximum for two children, but here he got hostel allowance education allowance only for one child. So five thousand per month into twelve, sixty thousand rupees he got. Exemption amount is three hundred per month or three thousand six hundred per annum 
per child. So he got only for one child. Exemption will also be given for one child. 3600 is exempted. So here. Compute the gross income from salary. So here computation of gross income from salary. Salary basic. How much is the basic salary? 15,000 per month into 12. 1,80,000. Allowances, DA, 2,700 per month into 12, 3,200. Children education allowance in working note. The children education allowance exemption is list of the following two. Actual allowance receipt. He got children education allowance only for daughter. Only for one daughter, 1,500 per month into 12, 18,000. Exemption will be given 1,200 per annum per child. Only for one child. Because he got the allowance for one child, exemption will also be given for one child. So 1200 rupees. Whichever is least, 1200 is least, that is exempted. Actual allowance received 18,000 minus exempted 1200, 16,800 taxable allowance. This 16,800 I have taken here. Children education allowance 16,800 taxable. Hostel allowance. The exemption is list of the following two amounts. Actual allowance received. So he got hostel allowance only for son, 5,000 rupees per month into 12, 60,000. Allowance, exemption will be given for 300 rupees per month or 3,600 per annum per child for a maximum of two children. But he got allowance for one child, so exemption will also be given for one child. So 3,600. Whichever is least, 3,600 is least. So deduct 3,600. 56,400 is a taxable allowance. That taxable allowance I have taken 56,400. Now take the total of this for 2,85,600. This is the total gross income from salary. That's all. This is the end of 16th problem. Now last and final problem, 17th. From the following particulars of income of Mr. Mahesh, who is working in a multinational corporation in Bangalore, Compute gross income from salary. Again, we have to compute gross income from salary, just like the previous problem. Details of pay per month. Basic 12,000 per month. So basic salary 12,000 into 12, 1,44,000. Then DA 8,000 per month. So DNS allowance 8,000 into 12, 96,000. Now, traveling allowance 3,000 per month and 35% is spent. Regarding traveling allowance, Income Tax Act says unspent amount is taxable. 35% is spent, so remaining 65% is unspent and that is taxable. So here you can see, traveling allowance, unspent is taxable. Allowance received 3000 per month into 12, 36,000. Of which 35% is spent, so minus 35% of 36,000, 12,600. So taxable is 23,400. This 23,400 I have taken here, traveling allowance. Now last one, academic allowance per annum 15,000, actual amount spent 9,000. Same rule for academic allowance. For academic allowance, unspent amount is taxable. The actual academic allowance received 15,000, amount spent 9,000. So 15 minus 9, 6,000 rupees the taxable academic allowance, 6,000. Take the total. 2,69,400 is the gross income from salary. Ha, so totally 17 problems I have completed on allowances. In this 17 problems we have covered entertainment allowance, house rent allowance, children education allowance, children hostel allowance, transport allowance, conveyance allowance, then academic allowance. All these allowance I have covered. If you are perfect on all these provisions, then only we can go for the main problems in which all these provisions will come. So, without understanding these short problems, it is useless to go to the main problem, you will get confused. So, that's why watch all these short problems carefully, twice, thrice, be perfect, then we can go for the main problems. So, if you are satisfied with my lecture, give a like to the video. Share my channel among your groups, among your friends, so that more students can watch the video and enhance the knowledge. Give your comments on these videos. Subscribe if you have not yet subscribed my channel. And by the super thanks which is given below my video, inshallah we will continue the next topic that is perquisites.
in the next video.